Welcome to Shoreview Trading. It's Monday, 3rd of October, around 9 a.m. London time. What should traders focus on if they want to trade equity index futures on a one to two week basis? That sort of classic swing basis, as it's known, that one to two week trend. What are the key factors that drive markets? What are the things to watch out for over the next week or two? And what are the kind of trades you should be putting on? That's what we want to talk about in this video. And that's what we talk about each and every day in our daily rag that's available for a free trial if you click on the link below or to subscribers via the website. Well, it was another pretty choppy, volatile week, another down week in equity markets. As you can see, we're putting up a chart of weekly performance of US equity indices in front of you now. The Philly Sox led the charge lower off about four and a quarter percent. Then we had the NASDAQ 100 down three percent and the S&P not far behind that, just short of three percent down over the course of last week. Coming on the back of a big week before that, the bear market continues. This leg lower has continued. It's a similar story, of course, in Europe. Europe, although a little bit more mixed. One or two country indices are up last week in Europe, but the majority were down, led by the likes of Portugal and the Spanish market, as you can see in the chart in front of you now, performing pretty poorly, whilst uh, the defensive Swiss market had a small up week. But in, in the main, the Europe followed the US. It was a big down week across the board. And there was a lot of stress building in these markets. It was particularly evident in the bond market, specifically in the UK bond market, but really globally. We saw UK 10-year gilt yields swinging a 50 basis point moves over the course of trading sessions, one or two trading sessions. You can see in this chart of UK 10-year gilt yields that we're putting up in front of you now, very dramatic, leading to intervention from the Bank of England. They stepped in, stopped doing quantitative tightening, started doing some buying of UK gilt bonds and ensuring that the volatility was dampened in the UK bond market. That was beneficial for bonds across the globe where we saw some local highs seemingly in place in the middle of last week in the US, UK and so on. But also stress building elsewhere. You can see this chart in front of you now of TED spreads. Uh, which is really a very good sign of stress in the banking system in the US, starting to build and, and adding to the pressure on equity markets. You can see in this chart, we've inverted TED spreads. As they go higher, equities tend to go lower. That's the pattern of the last six, seven months. So stress is building in a range of areas. Financial conditions reach their tightest in an awfully long time, as you can see on the chart in front of you now. And again, like TED spreads, that correlates inversely with equity markets at the moment. And with all that stress building, so come the rumors, the rumors of who's in trouble, who might fall over. That is typical at this sort of point in markets. So that is getting people more nervous. The narrative is becoming even more bearish. But the real question is, where will these markets find a floor? Are we close to a near term floor and a bear market relief rally? And indeed, what will it take to make that floor in markets? Do we need policy intervention? A bit like we saw from the Bank of England last week, reversing some of its tightening policy effectively. Or is it that actually we need full washout capitulation or are markets already at that point? Have we had enough panic selling such that we can find a floor around these levels? These are the key questions we address each and every day in the Daily Rag that's available to subscribers via the website or for a free trial, just click on the link below in this YouTube video. But one interesting angle we're looking at and focused on at the moment and been writing about in the Daily Rag is what's going on with the VVIX. So not the VIX, but the VVIX, which is the volatility of the VIX itself. The VIX, of course, is implied equity volatility. The VVIX is the volatility of that index. This is an important measure because it often turns and peaks before the VIX. And interestingly, last week, it looked like it might be putting in a peak at a key resistance level. You can see on the chart in front of you now, got up to its 200 day moving average, pushed a little bit above and then started to roll over at the back end of last week. Now, if it if it finds consistent resistance at their 200 day moving averages and keeps moving lower from that level, then there's every expectation that the VIX upon which the V VIX is based, the VIX itself will find a local high. As you can see on the chart in front of you now, it spiked aggressively last week. That was one of the pieces of the puzzle that was missing in terms of capitulation. It looks like we probably had that last week. Spiked up to those higher levels from earlier this year. Look like we might be rolling over at the back end of, la of last week. And of course, if the VVIX does roll over, then the VIX probably will. Why do I mention the VIX? Well, of course, 
the VIX and equities are inversely correlated, particularly at times of heightened volatility. So if the VIX is going to come down, equities are going to go up. So it's a piece of evidence that you feed into that puzzle about whether or not we are finding a, a major local low at around these sort of levels or not. And as I said, all of that we look at in the Daily Rag, available to subscribers via the website, or if you want a free trial, please click on the link below. Give us your name and email address, no credit card details required. We'll happily send you the rag for a bunch of trading sessions to help you get a feel for it and see if it's of use and interest to you. So what are we watching this week? Well, tons of stuff. Of course, the price action and all those asset prices we've been talking about, whether it's bonds, equities, subsets of the market, and so on and so forth. That is all critical, needs to be watched closely, the key levels on the VVIX and so on. But also in terms of macro, there's a lot of ISM data out of the States this week, ISM services and manufacturing, manufacturing today services on Wednesday. It's the big non-farm payrolls week on Friday. So the update on the labor market in the States and then there's an OPEC meeting this week, which will be a key focus for markets. How much of a cut may well come through on the supply side from OPEC and OPEC Plus. And then on top of that, there's some ECB meeting minutes and one or two speakers from the major Western central banks over the course of this week. So that's it from us. That's your morning market hit for Monday, 3rd of October. Thank you for listening. Please do subscribe to these videos on YouTube. Simply click on the subscribe button and like and share on social media, or follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and or Facebook. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Trade well.